नमस्ते शारदे देवी वीणा पुस्तक धारिणी विद्यारंभ करीश्या प्रसन्ना भव सर्वदा नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स एंड सॉरी फॉर द डीले लेट अस स्टार्ट विथ अ केस अ थर्टी फोर इयर ओल्ड मैन ऑफ से हाईली मस्क्युलर बिल्ड हु वॉज अ स्मोकर come to the clinic um uh, just surgical history appendicectomy many years ago constant and significant neck pain with severe headache and intermittent blackouts weakness in legs recently experienced two blackouts from which it took him several minutes to recover symptoms caused major depression also because previously he was very fit and able to lead normal active very active life he was having cervical whiplash injury but it was minimum due to low speed impact that's it but uh, there was much, no much problem sneezing causes significant increase in neck pain <clears throat> uh if he lifts minor weights also he may get pain uh, in the neck region neck pain increases severely with all movements of neck and neck movements were severely restricted because of his neck pain uh if he takes nsaid or muscle relaxants or even say snehan swedan there was no much relief or it was only temporary limited relief <clears throat> so he was put on antidepressants also by various physicians and orthopedic surgeon also and there was no significant cervical spine though there was uh, significant changes and uh, one can see cervical spine syndrome still it was related to the depression also physiotherapy no benefits <clears throat> he consulted many specialists also and um, one neurologist uh he examined him very carefully that is what he told patient told me pulse was regular and everything was fine but say uh even with the x ray it is very significant the neurologist came to know about this particular uh x ray posterior arc of atlas is missing apart from posterior tubercle see you can see that white arrow it shows posterior arc of atlas is missing apart from posterior tubercle and that is assimilated into occiput very limited range of cervical spine extension and flexion as well as limited skull cervical spine movements now this posterior arc of atlas is missing apart from posterior tubercle which is assimilated into the occiput 
that is the finding and his finding was told by a neurologist three years ago while driving during work uh, uh, the rear ended vehicle in front at approximately say uh, around 60 kilometers per hour it dashed in his vehicle his vehicle at the time of impact his head was turned to one side and within 15 minutes he experienced burning pain posteriorly in the neck three days later pain became so bad that uh, he required uh, strong uh, pain killers for that uh, impact at the time of impact his head was turned to one side within 15 minutes he experienced burning pain posteriorly in the neck and three days later pain became so bad that uh, uh, he has to uh, take uh, he had to take many uh, strong pain killers for that so that is a peculiar history given by the patient uh the neck movements were severely restricted due to significant increase in pain and neurological examination was normal abduction of arms beyond 90 degrees aggravated his neck pain so these are is main things see there is some encroachment of c3 c4 intervertebral foramen and <clears throat> due to osteophytic encroachment from the unconvertebral joint now in cervical spine open mouth x ray also and in case of plain uh, lateral x ray also patient was found <clears throat> arc of atlas is missing from posterior tubercle otherwise x ray examination was normal and uh, um, just only one thing there was assimilation of atlas within skull base because of severity of neck pain with restriction of all active movements uh, uh, he, he didn't try mri at that particular time afterwards he did it <clears throat> this was mainly this was cervical spine soft tissue injury includes vascular component which was causing blackouts there was a question mark vertebral artery injury if it is related to vertebral artery injury symptoms along with neck pain and restriction of movements there is a particular symptom known as blackout many a times patients get blackout temporarily for a minute or two maximum for a minute or two and afterwards they get relieved from that pain so the diagnosis is cervical spine soft tissue injury includes vascular component uh, because of which pain restriction of movement and blackout was uh, there so uh, this is 
one of the important point to be noted in this particular case in this case first of patient was treated with for, for three weeks uh, with samir pannag and trayodashanga gugul and after three weeks he was treated with uttar bhaktik sneha and uh, for that matter uh, patient was given <coughs> उत्तरभक्तिक स्नेह जीवन त्यादि गुरुत मेनली फॉर बैस्क्युलर कॉम्पोनंट अलॉंग विथ सॉफ्ट टिश्यू इंजुरी पेशंट वॉज ट्रीटेड विथ जीवन त्यादि गुरुत उत्तर भक्तिक स्नेह जीवन त्यादि गुरुत वॉज इज मेन ट्रीटमेंट अलॉंग विथ दैट लोकल एक्टिंग से मनिया बस्ती एंड पीचू with the karma was done patient got relieved within a span of say 8 to 10 weeks that is 2 to 2 and 1/2 months um and that's it that is the uh, first case one more case in this case this is a 39 year old woman and uh, slightly she was overweight and uh, there was no uh, such past history of this patient only thing operation of her left ear left ear drum was done around say 8 to 10 years ago <clears throat> uh she was having chronic neck and upper thoracic spine pain her main complaint was neck pain which radiates to both arms very heavily sometimes has burning sensation she also experience she was also experiencing intermittent pain radiating around her rib cage at around at breast level mm, physiotherapy treatment uh, was done to her neck and uh, upper thoracic spine feel worse so um she stopped you know, all the treatments mainly local acting treatments <clears throat> uh physiotherapy was increasing her numbness in the hands traction was increasing her numbness in the hands that is was she told to uh the nurse <clears throat> and she <clears throat> tried many uh, medications many self medications many uh, youtube treatments she did and one of the neurologist advised her to go back to work also but it was increasing neck arm pain Mm. she was referred to psychiatrist psychologist also and she was uh, say depressed after going to them uh, that is uh, say agony in this particular case <clears throat> there are, there were many trial and error in this particular case when she wa- was undergoing of say electrical nerve stimulation stimulation that is tens um uh, chronic neck and arm were paining and she could not wear 
say her uh, clothes also <clears throat> as it it the actions were aggravating her neck pain squashy sensation uh, was there at times while moving the neck um she was awakened by pain during nights and in particular time mm. after swedan or after hot water fermentation uh, that gives her temporary relief and uh, but uh, um, what we call it as uh, she was not understanding why water feels hot on arms and ha- and hands also but not when it is directed onto her cervical thoracic region at hand and at forearm she was feeling that hotness or that hot feeling was there but at cervical thoracic region she was not feeling any hot thing and there was a swedan at that particular area <clears throat> the motor vehicle accident was around say 2 uh, years ago and uh, no uh, it was like say jerk backward and forward like a uh, whiplash injury only uh and uh, uh, it was very much painful severe neck pain for few minutes after accident and she was after that she was uh, taken to uh, the hospital immediately etc etc hmm the reflexes were normal as such but restricted movements were there eye movements were normal and uh, uh, other things blood pressure and everything was absolutely normal in uh, this case <clears throat> slr and everything was also normal see this was reflex type syndrome due to soft tissue injury particularly at c1 c2 and c4 c5 c5 c6 level <coughs> so uh um, all the reports were done x ray reports were done and examination was also normal that way it was very much normal so it was soft tissue injury only and these type of patients come to you flexion and extension functional views should always be taken to determine whether there is any cervical spine instability unless there is contraindication uh such as say suspected vertebral artery injury with dizziness and nausea or say joint dislocation uh, that is to be ruled out and then we have to do full flexion and extension of that uh, particular joint see patients receiving needle acupuncture for cervical spine injuries should preferably be treated in seated position when you are doing agni karma and vidya karma do it in seated position to eliminate hyper extension of cervical spine unless patient is comfortable lying on their side mm. when we are doing agni or vidya karma in these type of cases remember that patient should not fall on the chair because of any shock or something like that so 
remember all these points and then go ahead with uh with the case this is a third case all these two uh, were say soft tissue injuries this is intervertebral disc protrusion case this is 46 year old married man and uh, he was having motor vehicle accident 10 12 years back and there was tingling in middle finger middle finger is related to c7 symptom came on immediately following motor vehicle accident and for 3 years he saw several several doctors who gave him that uh, pain was say uh, psychosomatic eventually he was referred to a psychiatrist <coughs> uh and he the psychiatrist told him the best advice he had ever been given during the psychiatric evaluation the psychiatrist told the patient that he knew exactly what was wrong so uh patient asked me how how did you know that uh <laughs> the psychiatrist had that type of motor vehicle accident and ruptured a disc in lower part of his neck and he was told that he was imagining his problem uh and going to many surgeons for opinion <laughs> one orthopedic surgeon did mri and found that disc prolapse was in his neck then um, uh, uh, he was relieved with proper treatment that uh, psychiatrist was relieved with proper treatment <laughs> so because of which uh, the psychiatrist told the patient that you must be having intervertebral disc protrusion at cervical spine level because of which you are getting a radicular symptoms and tingling in middle finger it must be between c6 and c7 so it was not a psychiatric case it was a case of intervertebral disc protrusion uh, right and left sided neck pain was there uh, <clears throat> the proper diagnosis was done of this patient and the diagnosis was ivpd and IV, uh, intervertebral disc prolapse in uh, the, uh, in case of mainly cervical spine is very difficult to treat and the probability of getting cured is uh i just 50 50% so uh that is very important although all these things uh forget it forget about all these things but if a patient is diagnosed correctly then you can do the correct treatment also in this particular case we avoided nasya we did uh, manya pichu uh, of say uh, vishagarbha tel for say 5 to 7 days and then bruhat sendhavadi tel for next 7 days after that next 7 days bala pichu was given bala tel pichu was given and uh, along with that patient was treated with uh, panchadikta vrata gukul and some other balya medicines uh, with that he was given soft collar for cervical spine for few weeks along with that he was given physiotherapy also after 15 to 20 days after uh, uh, the muscles got relaxed patient got really well in this case uh, his numbness was totally gone and uh, uh, patient was all right but 
the main important point was the diagnosis correct diagnosis because this patient uh, had been referred to a psychiatrist by an orthopedic surgeon only because psychiatrist was knowing the exact pr- uh, problem because he has undergone that problem so uh, he could be able to trace uh, the patient's problem bearing in mind the issue of dermatomal and dermatomal pain patterns discussed in introduction it should be possible to make a clinical diagnosis of central or posterior central cervical disc protrusion in this case mri is useful tool for say suspected cervical spine disc protrusion <clears throat> mri can be used for confirmation of disc bulge and protrusion but may miss tears in annular fibers so mr is confirmatory for disc bulge or protrusion and uh, for annular fibers you must see into details for mri <clears throat> this is again a fantastic case this is joint osteoarthrosis <clears throat> this is say 50 years old woman she uh, she was having uh, left c2 uh, uh, at that particular area there was a surgery done around say 20 years back uh, to this uh, patient for say left sided headache uh, neurologist performed that surgery 20 around 20 years back um, and uh, that was, that's it but uh, there was uh, left sided headache was seen there Uh, appendicectomy cholecystectomy was done for say uh, a few years back chronic left sided neck pain and headache that had flared up during last few months having uh, begun say around 2 years back she has history of headache uh see uh, since 20 years she did multiple investigations multiple treatments over the years the present headache and left sided neck pain was something different these headaches appear to be severe vascular oh uh, this was this particular headache was related to say tension type due to severe cervicogenic pain left sided neck symptoms of feeling hot followed by pain radiating from say uh, c5 vertebra to upper neck behind left eye causing severe headache see how patient is uh, describing his pain patient tells you she was feeling hot then followed by pain radiating from left side at around say c5 to upper neck then behind left eye causing severe headache <clears throat> these neck symptoms are precipitated by various neck movements uh which causes hot sensation on left side at around c5 spinal level uh she was given many types of say painkillers anti inflammatory medicine 
even antidepressants also for a chronic neck pain syndrome but uh, there was no help by all the medicines then she was given dipomethrol injection also <clears throat> local anesthetic injections many thing uh, but even spinal manipulation did not help her and on examination uh, say everything was uh, normal but power in upper and lower extremities were normal but at c4 c5 diminished power on flexion c5 c6 and extension c7 at elbows there was diminished power loss cervical spine ranges movement were limited by neck pain during extension it was absolutely limited uh that's it the what is the clinical diagnosis in this case <clears throat> see you can see one black arrow and say uh, second one is white arrow in this picture see uh, you can see the clip there is black arrow in left sub occipital region where uh, her uh, C2 related surgery was performed and C2 nerve was clipped and divided at the level of C5 that is white arrow fifth vertebra uh, that shows osteophyte projecting from the left joint toward vertebral artery in transverse foramen see this particular uh, osteophyte at C5 level that was compressing her vertebral artery and because of which patient was getting impinged patient was getting pain uh, because of that now uh, this case uh, shows you say uh, neurological plus vertebral artery related symptoms vertebral artery may be irritated by joint osteoarthrosis that is all uh, that is what told in this case again in this case we used uh, panchadikta vrutagukul as a drug of choice along with um, um, brugat saindavali oil for pichu that was the only two main treatments done uh, for this particular case but patient was uh, convinced because he was described everything in detail and then only uh, we started the treatment cervical cord myelopathy is also one of the uh, main point um, uh, one of the main uh, case uh, we have seen uh, this particular case also this is also a peculiar uh, case this is uh, this is related to vertebral artery only why i am telling you uh, in cervical spine why i am uh, talking about say a vertebral artery mainly because of vertigo see this is 41 years old man <clears throat> when a patient presents with unexplained headache with uh, say uh, neurological involvement you may consider intracranial 
or and extra cranial cause remember this there must be some intra or extra cranial cause that is what is very important he suffered from cluster headache uh, for say around 8 to 10 years sub occipital neck pain was is a history and it was radi radiating bilaterally to cause frontal headache uh, which occur mainly uh, on saturday sunday and um, he was having a complete day complete the whole day he was having headache this was associated with nausea and dizziness uh he was not suffering from photophobia he was not suffering from uh, uh shabda sahishnuta he was not suffering from uh, any eye problem neck pain is worse when he is tired all neck movements uh, were increasing his neck pain otherwise his health was very good and uh, he did physiotherapy plus uh, painkillers for many days but it was in vain as uh, some painkillers gave him good result like acyclovir in neurological examination there was no defect as such uh deep palpation of say upper cervical spine paravertebral muscles elicited bilateral tenderness but his blood pressure was absolutely normal in this case this shows at say c2 foramen transversarium and you can see two small arrows that indicates smooth curvy linear line that caused by vertebral artery torsicity torsius vertebral artery artery gets torsius and it uh, gives result to cluster type of headache this case was explained to us by an orthopedic surgeon this is a uh, peculiar case and this case was treated temporarily you have to give this patient muscle relaxants uh, we educated this patient uh, a vertebral artery um, uh, torsosity torsicity it gets torsius in this particular case you have to apply just you have to apply any liniment along with that we uh, gave him samir pannag plus mahavat vidvans and panchadikta gutagul patient relieved now uh, uh, in these particular cases so this was again a different case now let us come to some some test clinical test we will take only four five clinical test today which are important and tomorrow also we will uh, be uh, talking about some clinical tests related to it okay in cervical spine we should understand vertebral artery uh, related pathology neurological pathology or osteophyte related pathology that is bony pathology 
we should understand the uh, pathology related to say uh, strain uh, uh, in that particular area strain or strain in that particular area the pathology may vary from muscle from ligament from bone to uh, vertebral artery also patient is instructed to swallow in this particular case a positive test is one in which patient experiences difficulty or pain on swallowing which indicates cervical spine pathology mainly bony protuberance bony osteophyte or soft tissue swelling um, maybe due to say hematoma infection maybe tumor also in anterior portion of cervical spine so this is very important this is also one of the important uh, test that is temperature test see examiner or a doctor alternatively uh, applying hot and cold test tubes just behind patient's ears on each side if patient causes vertigo it indicates inner ear infection in cervical spine pathology please rule out cluster headaches and vertigo um, uh, and then you have to treat it with the perfection see this is known as vertebral artery test you have to uh, open your eyes and lie down in supine position now doctor supports patient's shoulder with one hand and with other hand passively he is extending patient's head and he is rotating it to opposite side doctor maintains this position for say 15 to 20 seconds and he will observe patient's eye movements if he is getting a symmetric pupil change then what patient may report any unusual sensation like say dizziness giddiness light headedness visual changes etc then this test is to be performed on other side also if patient is having nystagmus of eyes or symmetric pupils or experiences unusual changes it is vertebro basilar insufficiency if you are turning your head completely with uh, the support of other hand and if patient is getting nystagmus if patient is getting slightly blackout or vertigo type of uh, symptoms then the pathology is related to uh, vertebro basilar insufficiency <clears throat> now patient is in supine position doctor passively ro rotating patient's head as far as possible first to right and then to left then patient is instructed to rotate the shoulder um, as far to right as possible and as far to left as possible while keeping eyes open and looking straight ahead if it is positive a dizziness test is positive uh, it causes dizziness while head and shoulders are rotated this is known as if you uh, uh, experience dizziness then you see it is vertebral artery dysfunction if dizziness is experienced only when head is rotated remember this thing huh? it is very important if dizziness is experienced only when head is rotated then semicircular canals 
of inner ears are involved. Remember this thing. Eyes should be open. You can rot and you should lie down and you, uh, the doctor or your mother will rotate your neck. And if you are uh, experiencing dizziness, then uh, while, uh, say, when head is rotated, then it is semi-circular canal of ear, inner ear, are involved. That is what is uh, you understand. Very, very important. We uh, say there is no uh, uh, vertigo in cervical spine. But no, my dear friends, it is very much important. <clears throat> you can see this... Um, Examiner places one hand over patient's forehead and thumb of other hand over spinous process of axis. Patient instructed to slowly flex the head while examiner presses backward with hand placed over patient's forehead. Now he is giving counter pressure. Uh, his right hand is on a patient's forehead. You can just press it behind. And at the same time, of a left thumb should be pressed in between that occiput, that particular spinous process of axis. Positive test is one in which patient's head slides backward during movement and he may get a cluck sound which indicates subluxation of atlas and axis. It is in case of whiplash injury. Remember this uh, while asking uh, for a genuine history. Uh, now, remember one thing. This test is to be performed with extreme precautions. Now, say uh, one more test. Examiner stand at the head of patient and rest on patient's head on examiner's abdomen, say. Examiner or a doctor cradles patient's head with both hands and places fingers on upper cervical spine on each side of middle, midline. Now the examiner will slowly side bend patient's cervical spine just a few degrees. Just he is tilting his neck. Spinous processes do not move as patient's cervical spine is being side bent. It indicates odontoid fracture or ligament uh, rupture. This test is to be done with extreme precautions. That is what is very important. There are other tests also. Tomorrow we are uh, going to see other tests also related to cervical spine examination. There are seven or eight different uh, uh, tests. You can see that. So thank you all for today. Today we have seen some uh, cases, three, four different different cases. Every time cervical spine, then Bahu Shirshakate Vate Nasyam Panam Chauktar Bhaktikam. Uh, then yoga basti karam, agni vidya karma. No. Important is diagnosis. Whether the pathology is related to, uh, say, bone, vertebral bone, or ligaments related to it, or intervertebral disc, osteoarthritis, or myelopathy. Tomorrow I will talk, I will be talking about uh, two different cases related to myelopathy. So there are n number of things which has to be evaluated properly and then you can give him proper uh, pinpoint treatment. Important is diagnosis. <clears throat> so, thank you all for giving me this opportunity. Thank you Shreya C. Learning Academy for giving this type of uh, 